This video is to justify the budget for phase two of reflooding Laguna Salada. So why is there a picture of a lazy river amusement park ride or water park ride on screen? The answer is it's the closest analogy to how we're going to create a circulation system in Laguna Salada to preserve its salinity levels for the long term in one of the most evaporative areas in the world. In short, just bringing water in will leave you with a saltwater mess and circulation is the primary key to maintaining and sustaining life in Laguna Salada. Fortunately, the region in question is flat in the extreme. In California's Central Valley, which is also very flat, uh, the California Aqueduct uses booster pumps that don't lift water. They simply increase its velocity and make it flow further to the south towards California's old Tulare Lake or the Tulare portion of the Central Valley's aquifer. Within the lifetime of any proposed project, Laguna Salada will likely flood to a much greater size than it is today. You'd have to spend a lot more money to stop it than to encourage it. Utilizing the existing tidal currents that come in from Sonora and move in and out through a very small channel, which causes salinity to actually increase in this region too much, we can create a near lazy river type of circulation system existing mostly on flat ground that will help us to maintain solidity levels and our return system will not harm the ecosystem to the south. Again, in short, the science and empirical evidence dictates that when the extreme northern gulf warms to temperatures at about 30 degrees Celsius. These warmer waters have a huge impact on the North American monsoon. If they warm to 30 degrees early, you have an Arizona monsoon. If they warm to 30 degrees late in the season, you have a New Mexico monsoon. New Mexico monsoons do little for precipitation in the Colorado River Basin and little to mitigate the declining stream flows within the Colorado River itself. Although the extreme evaporation in Laguna Salada will tend to have a cooling effect on the waters, solar energy and ambient temperatures in the area will warm those shallow waters in Laguna Salada to the extent that they act like a solar pool heater that actually increases evaporated water availability and increase sea surface temperatures in Laguna Salada, the Delta, and the Northern Gulf. This analysis of the trigger mechanism for the North American monsoon can be found on page 161 of Dr. Ivanova's dissertation. This document is attached to this video transmittal. Here, as sea surface temperatures in the Northern Gulf move from 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, the rainy season associated with the North American monsoon is triggered. When sea surface temperatures are at 29 degrees Celsius, the layer of free convection is well separated from the liquid condensation level and there is insufficient buoyancy in the near saturated well mixed marine boundary layer to break through the local inversion uh, layer that exists at this time of year. When sea surface temperatures reach 30 degrees, the marine boundary layer achieves sufficient buoyancy to break through the inversion layer. The liquid condensation level and layer of free convection finally converge and the monsoon season begins in earnest. The time-tested process of conserving and transferring water from the Colorado River Basin to essentially the Pacific Shore communities is not free and comes at a price that's larger than even the most recent studies uh, have indicated. While $70 billion over the next uh, 30 years is nothing to sneeze at, it probably pales in comparison to what will happen when 40 million people are forced to live on less and less water, less development, less economy, 
less water for ecosystems, and a general degradation in lifestyle. Here in this area, we have the opportunity to flood Laguna Salada or do a pipeline. The pipeline's expensive and has little to no ancillary value. It doesn't provide for a fishery or an enhanced monsoon. In fact, the list of environmental and economic opportunities, including things like pump hydroelectric storage, is too long to list here. As for the impact on the North American monsoon from any project we plan on building, uh, Drs. Mitchell and Mejia from the Desert Research Institute stand ready to conduct a mesoscale regional climate model that should give us pretty accurate information on how stream flows in the Colorado will be affected. This study would cost about $100,000 and take about 18 months. This is a cost firmly associated with Phase 1 and maybe the first thing that we should fund. While it's unclear if and or how um, enhanced monsoonal rain and or Colorado River flows could be monetized as a result of flooding Laguna Salada, the open water credits market provides a good way of estimating such values. Evaporation from Laguna Salada will be in excess of a million acre feet a year. If it produces 100,000 acre feet of additional Colorado River flow, it would be worth about $2.465 billion. At 500,000 acre feet, $12 billion. Not bad for an ancillary benefit. Looking at the cost side of things and selecting the mid-sized uh, pipeline project, we're looking at $2.5 billion worth of pipeline. Annual costs of electricity alone will be over $27 million. Looking at the cost of just pipeline and its installation, we can easily determine the cost per linear yard of what our means of transportation will cost. In this case, that's about $7,950 a linear yard. In areas like Laguna Salada and or uh, the Delta, utilizing dredges like this and simple excavated canals, we can use existing bids and purchase dredges that will move a cubic yard of dirt for as little as 31 cents a cubic yard. The cost of these dredges will be amortized over the useful lifetime of about 20 years, leaving a cost of conveyance for the canals they dig at somewhere below $100 a linear yard or really closer to $88 a linear yard. Reality dictates that 31 cents a yard may be too low, so let's boost it to 50 just to be safe. That provides us with an $88 per linear yard for the cross-section shown on this image. Then let's go ahead and add a 20% premium for the contractors that do it. This still leaves us with a per linear yard cost of construction of 1.32% that of the pipelines in other budgets. This defines the magic, the alchemy, the engineering that makes flooding Laguna Salada the more cost-effective means of conveying water to the Salton Sea. While excavating shoreline canals or other low-lying canals with equal water pressure on each side is cheap, I am having difficulty with the law of large numbers. With no existing canal and a grade equal to the black line, excavating a canal like this would be the cheapest. Something like this would be more expensive. In excavating a brand new return canal, it's going to be more like this, which is more expensive. So while I can state unequivocally that this type of system is much less expensive than any sort of pipeline conceptualization. Bidding quantities of earth moved to create the circulation system is not possible for a human being without, let's say, accurate topo flights, putting that information into a grading computer, and actually calculating quantities. 
only because the cost of channelization is so low relative to the large scale of this project, which covers at least 81 miles. Am I willing to break the traditions of estimating in construction and provide politicians and others with a general conceptual budget with a cost-benefit relationship far greater than that of a pipeline and a perimeter lake in the Salton Sea.